Um, so hi everyone, uh, thanks Alex for uh, the introductions. Um, as Alex explained, uh, today we'll explore uh, mobile lead generation, generation strategies. Um, I believe that uh, mobile traffic is one of the biggest of opportunity for marketers today because obviously it's a huge part of web traffic. And what's interesting is that while everybody talks about mobile, uh, we see companies every day that haven't started uh, to take advantage of this opportunity. And when you consider the companies who have started uh, investigating, uh, investing in uh, mobile lead generation strategies, uh, you can see that they achieve amazing results. Um, so today I'll use this presentation to show you how to make the most of your mobile traffic and to collect more uh, leads on your mobile website. Um, but first, um, let me introduce myself very briefly. Uh, I'm head of uh, growth at WisePops. Uh, we're a SaaS company. We help marketers uh, grow their conversions uh, with smart on-site messaging. So most of the time, pop-ups or bars. Uh, we're mainly focused on e-commerce, and we work with uh, Fender, Dolce Gabbana, Nissan, and more e-commerce companies. Uh, we also work uh, with B2B companies, such as uh, Egress, Talent Sprint, or uh, Client Boost in the US. Um, and you can find more information about WisePops on wisepops.com or on our blog. So uh, first, let's see why mobile represents such a unique opportunity for marketers today. Um, <clears throat> as you can see on this slide, mobile represents a huge share of web traffic. It's more than half of the web traffic uh, worldwide. So again, it's a lot and it's worth uh, consideration. Um, and so that's the, the worldwide uh, share, but if you look at some at the country level, uh, you'll find countries where uh, mobile traffic represents almost 80% of the traffic. So, for example, if you look at India or uh, China or uh, Saudi Arabia, for example, you can see that it's way more than half percent of the traffic which is on mobile. So. In these countries, it's, it's a huge opportunity. Now, if you look at the time that we spent on, on um, each device, you can see that, for example, so that's uh, figures in the US, but in the US, you can see that internet users uh, now spend like 59% of their time on smartphones. So, even in, that, in terms of the, the time we spend on mobile devices, this is a very like huge market and huge opportunity for you. Uh, last proof that it's definitely something uh, worth consideration and a huge shift. Uh, if you were familiar with SEO and if you follow uh, Google or Master uh, Blog, uh, you, you can see that in one of their latest announcements, uh, they insist on the change and they say that we now live in a primarily mobile world. So, you know, even when even Google insists on the, import, uh, on the importance of mobile, you know that it's a very big shift and that's something you should really um, keep in mind. Um, now, so we see all these figures about the importance of mobile, but you may think that you're not concerned uh, because I don't know, maybe you think uh, my market is not concerned by mobiles, etc. But when you look at the figures, you can see that the change impacts both e-commerce. Uh, so in e-commerce, uh, the latest uh, monetate study shows, for example, that Mobile traffic represents uh, eight, 46 percent of the traffic. Sorry, 46, so almost half of the 
e-commerce traffic is now made on mobile devices. So for e-commerce, it's huge. But this is not only an e-commerce um, trend. Um, according to Google, 50% of B2B searches now um, happen on mobile. So in short, what I wanted to insist on in this slide is that everyone is concerned. It's not, it's not only an e-commerce or a B2C trend, it's also a B2B trend. And I don't see any reason why you could say mobile doesn't affect me or I don't give a damn about mobile because everyone is affected. It's a huge trend and it affects everyone. Now, um, let's speak about lead generation. Um, as you probably now uh, know, lead generation strategies are uh, quite mature on desktop. And in an ideal world, it would be great to replicate the same strategies we use on desktop devices on mobiles. But that's not likely. And I'd like to detail the four main reasons why uh, desktop strategies can cannot be replicated on mobile and what you why you need a mobile specific strategy so the first reason why you need a mobile specific strategy is the the, the available bandwidth for um, mobile visitors uh, on average mobile users have a bandwidth which is 65% lower than desktop users. So this means that you can't afford to use the same kind of heavy visuals that you use on desktop because it would take forever to load on a mobile and as a result, the conversion rate will be very low. So this is not a good uh, strategy. Second reason why you need a mobile specific um, strategy is uh, screen size. Uh, as you know, and it's quite obvious, mobile screens are smaller. So this means you won't have the same uh, visibility for uh, your lead forms than you have on desktops and tablets. Um, so again, you need to adapt. Third reason, um, as you know, we don't use a mouse and a keyboard on the mobiles, and this impacts the user experience as well. Um, um, to be more specific, um, on, on mobile, you should use larger buttons and links to make sure that they can be clicked and to make sure that they work for uh, mobile users. Um, and a quick indication, Apple recommends a minimum target size of 44 pixels square for links or call to actions. Um, another point worth mentioning is the fact that forms take longer to fill in on mobile devices. So if you have a very long form on desktop, then you know that on mobile, it will be very frustrating for the users to fill in. So you need something shorter um, as well. And then we have the fourth and last reasons, uh, Google rules. Uh, in January 2016, they started penalizing what they called intrusive interstitials. Uh, so this change affects only pop-ups, and I'll come back to it later to um, explain more in detail what they said. Um, <clears throat> so when you see all these challenges like limited bandwidths, um, touch controls, um, etc., you might be tempted to drop the ball and say, well, like mobile is too challenging and well, I just don't want to uh, go into this. But the point is that mobile lead generation is really a must. It's something you can't avoid. And let me explain why. As we already said, uh, mobile represents a large portion of your traffic. So it's interesting in terms of um, lead generation. But also what's interesting is that when you look into the figures 
and, and the KPIs for mobile visitors, uh, you realize that they have a shorter attention span. Uh, in other words, it means they're more likely to leave your website without converting. Uh, this translates into a lower page use per session count. Um, and this was highlighted in Monetate's uh, latest e-commerce study. Second thing uh, that we have to take into consideration is that on average, the uh, conversion rate on mobile devices is significantly lower as well. According to the same Monetate uh, study, uh, the average e-commerce conversion rate on mobiles is 12% lower than on desktops. So it's a significant gap. Um, and finally, a third element which is uh, interesting, um, mobile has a unique position in the buying process. Uh, according to Google studies, a lot of users start their search for a new product on mobile. So this means that often mobile will be the first te step of the, of the buying process. So if we recap the situation very quickly, you have a huge share of your traffic done on mobile devices and mobile visitors are less likely to convert, like their conversion rate is significantly lower. So, in other words, we have a huge opportunity here to collect emails, um, to, um, for, um, to collect the emails of these visitors because they have a lower conversion rate. There are many of them, and it's, it's important to collect their emails um, on mobile to nurture them later and to convert them and to convert them into buyers. So that's, that's very important to uh, collect emails. Right. Now I'd like to give you an idea of the potential of mobile lead generation uh, strategies. Um, and more specifically, I wanted to share the results of two retailers who use Wisepops and who experimented with uh, mobile lead generation strategies. Uh, the first example uh, comes from uh, Platypus Shoes. They're the, if, you're, if you don't know them, they're the largest shoe retailer in Australia. And about a year ago, they started experimenting with mobile optimized pop-ups. And today they collect a majority of their emails on mobile devices. Um, as you can see on the slide, they collect almost 60% of their emails on mobile devices. So, that's quite a lot, and that, that's why it's so interesting. Um, then we experimented, we experimented with Sketches Australia as well, and they started using call to action pop-ups about five months ago. Um, I'll explain what are uh, call to action pop-ups later, but the results are very interesting. Today they get 43% of their emails on mobile, so this is, this is huge. And when you know the conversion potential of email marketing, then you know this means that you have a large opportunity and the extra cost is, is very limited. So you know it's, it's a, a low hanging fruit to speak like Lucas. Um, now, before diving into the strategies that you can put in place, um, I'd like to discuss first why the traditional lead generation techniques don't work on mobile. I'll be quick, but I think it's very important to highlight why it won't work on mobile. Um, so let's start with a landing page. Um, I guess you have seen a lot of them already. Um, so this one, I found it on Kissmetrics. Um, as you can see, it features six different fields, so a lot of, of fields. Of course, it doesn't look right on the mobile devices. It looks completely broken. And what's interesting as well is uh, the incentive that Kissmetric um, chose. Uh, they reward new subscribers uh, with a PDF. And I think as a mobile user, it's not the ideal reward because, you know, 
using a, reading a PDF on the on the mobile uh, device is usually not a good experience. So that's why using landing page can be tricky on mobile devices. Uh, then we have uh, content upgrades and uh, lead magnets. Uh, I found this one on Backlinko. Uh, Brian Dean claims it converts almost almost five percent of his visitors into email subscribers. So that's interesting for desktop. But we suspect that most of them are actually using a desktop because the form looks awful on a mobile phone. And again, apart from the design aspect of things, um, I don't know what I would do with the PDF that I would download on, the, on my smartphone. So again, the, the, the incentive is not ideal, I would say. Then we have the, the third and last desktop strategy, um, which is called the pop-ups. Um, so we are a pop-up company ourselves, and our average pop-up conversion rate is 5.9%, uh, so almost 6% of the users who see a pop-up will, will share their email. So it would be great if we could use them on mobiles as well. But as you guessed, it's not possible. And I'd like to explain why now. So let's stop for a minute here and detail what Google said about mobile pop-ups and why we should be very careful with them. Um, Google shared the guidelines about, about a year ago, and they wanted to combat what they call intrusive interstitials. Uh, in other words, pop-ups that make the content of a page less accessible. So you can see some examples on the left um, of the slide. Um, as you can see, all the, the examples they shared um, hide the content of the page. That's why they're, they're judged um, intrusive interstitials. Um, <clears throat> Google shared some rules if you want to use uh, mobile pop-ups. Uh, first, they said they say that you can still use this kind of pop-ups on the left, but you can use them only if you uh, display them on the second page of the view, on the second page view, and not on the landing page. So this is the first option: use in intrusive interstitials, but display them on the second page. First option. Second option. If you want to display a pop-up on the landing page, first, it should take less than 30% of the screen. And then it should be positioned at the bottom or the top of the screen. So you can see on the right, this is uh, an example on Dickie's website. They chose a pop-up that they position at the bottom. As you can see, it's very, it's non-intrusive and it's, it's good regarding uh, considering Google guidelines. Um, another uh, example, so on the left, a pop-up which is not compliant with Google guidelines, and on the right, an, an example of a compliant pop-up. Now that we know the rules of the game, I think it's time to show you how you can win the game and how you can collect more lead on your uh, uh, on mobile devices. Uh, so let's start with the first uh, strategy, which I called very simply mobile specific forms. Uh, this strategy is very simple. Uh, it, it, you just need to adapt your desktop forms to mobile rules. So there are two ways you can do it. The first way you can do it is to break down the form in a few steps. So that's the examples on the left. So if you break down the form, it won't deter the users and it will allow you to, to use larger fields and buttons so that the, the form is really usable on mobile devices. Second option, it's even more simple. Uh, it's, uh, you can simply strip down the form and ask for the email address only. Then, you know, once you have the email address, you can send a follow-up email to qualify the lead and ask for uh, more details such as first name, company, company size, etc. 
So this is an example of a very um, uh, simple form. Uh, it comes from Intercom. And as you see, they replaced a long form with a simple email form. And as you can see, it's very simple and I, I think it's very efficient. So a great example. Uh, this second example come from, comes from Client Boost. So they have a very long form because they, they want to collect qualified leads from the start and they want you know, to qualify the leads as soon as they collect the email address. So the form is still long, but it's broken down in a few steps. Um, if you use type form, for example, you should be familiar with this kind of uh, format and uh, with the, the, this kind of uh, technique. Um, <clears throat> Second strategies, uh, mobile optimized pop-ups. Um, so I um, detailed the rules uh, shared by Google again. Um, and you can see an example from Timberland. Um, to tell you more about this pop-up, it's displayed on landing to new visitors. And as you can see, it takes less than 30% of the screen, so it doesn't obscure uh, the content of the page. Um, I, sh I included more example. Um, we love mobile optimized pop-ups because usually they're very easy to design. Uh, most pop-up builders allow you to design this kind of pop-up and they work very well. So it it's a great technique. Then we have a third strategy, which is close, which we call call to action pop-ups. So with call to action pop-ups, you display a call to action instead of a pop-up and the user has to click the call to action to trigger the mobile phones. Uh, it's interesting because as it's small and non-intrusive, you can display it on multiple pages, not just a landing page. Uh, it's compliant with Google guideline and the users choose if and when they want to click the call to action. So it's a better experience for uh, the user. Uh, so this is an example. I, ha I have to be quick, so I'll skip it, but I'll share my slides uh, later if you want to have a, a second look. Um, I wanted to share the results of an ABC test um, with sketches that we did with sketches to tell you more about the results that you can expect with um, call to actions pop up. So we did the first version where we displayed a mobile optimized pop up on landing. As you can see, the conversion rate was about 2%. Then we did a second version where we displayed a light box pop up on the second page viewed. The conversion rate was about the same. And then we use the last version where we use the call to action displayed on all pages except the checkout pages. And the results were like very impressive. As you can see, without using any coupon uh, or any specific reward, uh, they converted almost 3% of their new mobile visitors into subscribers. Um, so again, I think it, it just proves how efficient mobile leads uh, lead generation strategies can be. And again, it shows that it can be very simple. Um, I'll skip this one because we don't have much time, but it's kind of the same idea. And I would like to discuss the last strategy, chatbots. Um, so, this is an example on Drift, the chatbot company. Um, as you can see, it's a very, uh, it's non-intrusive, so it's compliant with Google guidelines. It's highly personalized. So uh, as you can see in the example, they know that I work for Wisepops and they use the name of my company in their um, lead form. So it, it's very smart, it's very personalized. Um, Chatbots are great because they can engage your visitors even when uh, your time is offline, when your team is offline, sorry. Uh, but there is one limiting factor uh, in the sense that you need a sales team to answer the questions and it, it can also take quite some time to configure the, the playbook. So um, 
Chatbots are quite difficult to scale. That's why I think it's mostly a B2B techniques, but that's worth um, experimenting. Very quick uh, recap. Um, so first, first thing you have to uh, keep in mind, like mobile is much too big to be ignored. Whether you're in B2B or e-commerce, uh, mobile users represent a very large share of your audience and it cannot be ignored. Uh, second element to keep in mind, you cannot just replicate the desktop, the, the lead generation strategies that you use on desktop. You have to create mobile specific uh, lead strategies for your website. Uh, so you can use, as we saw, mobile forms, mobile optimized pop-ups, call to action pop-ups, bars, or chatbots. It's up to you to choose the strategies, but you can just ignore uh, your uh, mobile visitors. <laughs>